welcome so in this session now we are going to start learning the web framework echo it is a web framework for developing web applications in golang it is highly performant and minimalistic just like golang itself okay and uh, it's very easy to install in fact it's uh, installing it as it is the same as installing any package in go and from this session onwards we are going to start exploring how it can be used to develop rest apis uh, we'll start slow and we'll actually make our code more complex we'll intentionally make some mistakes so that we can learn from it and uh, eventually we'll be ready with some kind of uh, production scale application that you can practice to uh, you know learn the framework okay so to install this framework all you have to do is use this command go get minus u flag so that you have the late uh, you have all the dependencies updated okay and you use this command and it's going to install the latest version of the echo framework on the system all right so you do this and it's got the packages installed on your system right now on in your folder inside your folder if you go back to the go mode file okay so you can see that it's got this version 4 installed on the machine on, on the system right now in the, in the folder all right uh, so now we can start writing our main.go file okay so package main main and then import well the thing with vs code is uh, when you're using third party package packages VS Code may not actually, uh, VS Code may be slow with its IntelliSense and sometimes the IntelliSense may not work with third party packages. But if you import them explicitly, then it's not an issue. And that's why if, if you start facing some kind of issues with third party packages, you might as well consider actually importing them explicitly in your application. So, what I'm going to do right now is uh, import echo package manually and now I have my main method here all right and the first thing I want to do is declare a variable called echo and uh, you see I think my intelligence is still kicking up but let me save so I think once you save it uh, hopefully it starts working yes so echo uh, new actually gets you a pointer to echo and and we'll learn what that is in subsequent sessions but for now just go with me okay so once you have this then you can actually use all kinds of methods on top of it okay so you can have something like e get e post Okay, you can have something like e put, e delete. You get the idea, right? So this is very handy and it's it's very uh, convenient. But for now, in this session, we are just going to focus on the get method. Okay, so this get here refers to uh, the HTTP method get, and similarly, the port, post, and delete were referring to the HTTP methods. Okay, uh, if you look at its method signature so the first one is the path which is actually the pattern all right what we called the pattern in the previous session so for now i'm just going to go with the root path okay and the second is actually a handler func so let's let's see what handler func is so if you look at this get method signature so the first one was the path second is the handler func and third is this middleware func Let's not focus on this right now, but let's focus on this handler func. We know that handler func was kind of an important thing in previous sessions, so let, let's figure this out. So if you go to this handler func, it's actually a type. It is a type. So if you scroll up, there's a common type block. Again, it's defining a bunch of bunch of types together. Echo is one of them. So, for example, this E here is a pointer to this echo struct. 
and similarly we got this handler func so handler func is a type which is a function underneath the function that accepts context as an argument and returns an error now what is this context now context is kind of a big interface okay and we will you know explore it bit by bit you can see that it's quite big and it's got a bunch of things and we will learn this slowly and uh, gracefully but for now uh, you can think of it as something that actually encapsulates a lot of the things that you require in an HTTP request or a response okay it's pretty handy handy that way and we'll, we'll figure that out in the upcoming sessions anyway so I got the path and the second argument has to be a method so let me write an inline method here itself okay so it's gonna be uh, so what was the signature again so the signature was uh, for the handler func uh, it was expecting the context right and it was returning an error okay so so the context would be C and it would be context all right and it returns an error and this is my method implementation right here okay and what I'm going to do is I'm going to return because I want to give back some response right so I'm going to return for what exactly so I'm going to use this context object itself so context object has a method called string now what is this method for well I'm going to actually respond with a common string message kind of an hello kind of a hello world message okay it's got a lot of other method methods like if you want to return a JSON or something else but for now for the purpose of this uh, starting example I just want to return string okay and uh, so if you look at the string method signature here so the first one is the code so this refers to the HTTP code that you want to respond with okay so I want to respond with 200 status code okay because it's going to be a successful response and the message that I want to send back is well hello there okay and uh, that is it that is all I need to define my endpoint all right but we still need to start the server we haven't started the server yet and starting a server is also very easy it's also part of this echo struct pointer okay so it's got a method called echo and it accepts an address and it returns a string okay let's not handle the error right now let's just pass the string and the string is the address string and I'm going to go with 8080 port here right now okay now if I click uh, um, I'm just going to save it and I'm going to use gin to start it up so gin hyphen hyphen all hyphen hyphen immediate run main dot go so if you see that the UI is kind of uh, the terminal is actually going to give is giving some kind of echo specific output here so high performance minimalist go web, web framework okay now I'm going to go back to insomnia and I'm going to start hitting this endpoint so if you click send here you can see the message here with hello there right and that's not surprising I mean we've already done this kind of things before but but look what happens if I actually send a post method now if you remember in our previous sessions with uh, the standard library we had to explicitly you know do some kind of thing so that uh, post uh, was you know would actually be handled in a different way or send a particular status code so in this case when I do this uh, it's already giving me that this method is not implemented so it's not allowed whereas in our previous sessions we, we saw that sometimes some of our endpoints will respond the same way for all the methods right so we had to sort of be explicit about it that this is the method that we want to be handled in a certain way 
uh, it wasn't all that bad, but we still had to be somewhere explicit here. It's taking care of some of the things for us. Okay, let's go back to get and we get that message here. If I append anything else here to the endpoint, it's going to respond with 404. And this is not something new. Even in our previous sessions with HTTP package, we were able to get this thing, right? So this is expected, all right? But if you go back to the code here, so now our code looks much simpler. And that, that's the advantage to be derived by using frameworks like this that it looks more assembled and structured. And in fact, if you got multiple endpoints, if you have multiple endpoints here, I can just have something, some declaration like this, or I can move to a different file and have a separate declaration and it becomes more structured that way. So that's the kind of advantage here. Uh, there's two more things I want to add to this. So for example, we've got this 200 status code, which is kind of hard coded, but it's, it's not a standard practice we, we, you don't want to do that uh, instead what you want to do is you want to use HTTP status codes that are available in HTTP package so I think it is uh, HTTP status okay status okay all right so it is as good as 200 in fact, these are a list of constant values. Okay, if you, I don't think I, I'm not able to route to that thing right now, but it's it's actually a constant which results to the same value as 200. But it's it's a more elegant way of writing code. Okay, another thing is that we're, we're not handling error here. Okay, uh, of course, you could do something like this, and then you can handle error in a different way. But Echo has a different way, a native way of handling it, and that is you can use a logger here. So it's not only going to log your output, but it's also going to exit when something bad happens in starting up the server. So it's going to exit. So you've got this logger and it's got this fatal method. Okay. And it's going to, because this method here returns an error and fatal here accepts an empty interface it's going to print this error and it's going to log it right before it exits all right uh, we can also use e-logger to log some kind of simple printing messages okay so i'm just going to print that listening on port 8080 okay and i'm going to save it and you can see that I've got some message here getting printed and uh, I go back to here and my endpoint works exactly the same way okay so that was our first session and I think in the subsequent sessions now we'll start exploring the context object exploring other endpoints ex uh, you know uh, working with uh, query params and headers and cookies Th that's all coming up but I think this was a very good starting point and I hope you liked it. I expect that you liked it. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next session.